Let's get straight to CBS News White House reporter Jackie Alemany. She is joining hey, me Vlad. now from Washington. Good to see you, Jackie. Good to see you, too. Um, all right, so there's a lot to get through. I mean, uh, obviously, we just listened to the president uh, make uh, some comments there with regards to prayer. I thought it was sort of interesting that he mentioned the this sort of alleged war on Christmas, uh, that people don't say Merry Christmas. Um, but let's get to the real news of the day. Uh, you had an interesting, you and other White House reporters had an interesting back and forth with uh, Sarah Sanders. Uh, do we have that? I want to play that for our viewers, and then I want to get you to talk about that. All right, so I'm told we do not have that. But what did Sarah Sanders say to reporters' questions about the bombshell news that Rudy Giuliani, who just joined the Trump legal team, made yesterday on Fox News? Yeah, and Vlad, before we get to that, I just want to point out the irony of Trump declaring today National Prayer Day while we're the media is saturated with reports of the president knowing that uh, Michael, his lawyer, Michael Cohen, paid off uh, a porn star. Um, but back exactly. to the news, um, which is that, yeah, uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders uh, parlayed the message that the White House is going to be pushing forth all day today, which is that this is ongoing litigation and she's not going to comment on it. Uh, she refused to answer any questions from reporters, which is what we will continue to see all day, according to my White House sources, um, in order to put out what they described as Rudy Giuliani's dumpster fire. Um, which is, uh, uh, you know, muddling the waters, refusing to comment and um, claiming that it's ongoing litigation and refusing to say whether or not she knew that the president was lying of having no knowledge that his personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, had paid off uh, porn star Stormy Daniels um, to keep quiet about uh, the affair that she's alleged to have had with the president several years ago. So what's going on there in the White House? What's the mood? Because Rudy Giuliani just joins the legal team. Uh, one of President Trump's longtime lawyers decides to leave the legal team. And, you know, I mean, just give me a sense of what the mood there is right now, because I've been following your Twitter feed, Jackie, and one of the things that you pointed out is this is what some people had wondered once Hope Hicks left the Oval Office, which is that President Trump is going to take over. Now, I guess he's his own chief of staff, but he's now also his own comms director. Yeah, that's right. We reported when uh, Hope Hicks, his former communications director um, and probably closest confidant, uh, left the White House that staffers inside the White House were really concerned that the president would take communications into his own hand, that there would be no one there to rein him in uh, during weeks, chaotic weeks like we're, the week we're seeing right now. Um, and so the mood is stunned, but not surprised. Uh, staffers were texting me last night that they were really, um, you know, stunned by Giuliani's performance on Fox and Friends and equally as stunned this morning. But again, not surprised. This is the same um, Trump supporter who at the beginning of the administration, while the administration was trying to claim that the travel ban was in fact not a ban on keeping Muslims out of the country, went on Fox and Friends and said that the president asked him how to ban Muslims from entering the country and called it a Muslim ban. So they know that they, they were bracing for this wild ride that Rudy Giuliani would take them on. And we've already seen in the past weeks since Rudy Giuliani joined um, the president's outside counsel, uh, that there have been leaks. There have been a lot of stories that have gotten out there. But at the same time, you know, Giuliani told Bob Costa of the Washington Post himself that he spoke with the president about this and that the president is very pleased with his um, with his uh, performance last night. So it's really hard to cut through the noise here. But this is really, you know, the standard operating procedure in the White House. We've seen this pattern play out over and over again. Sarah Sanders go out there, make false statements, you know, claiming one thing and then another Trump character really foils uh, the White House communications team message and blows it all up. And then Sarah and the communications team are left to clean up the mess. You know, it's 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 as you say, it's just fascinating that the president just delivered uh, some remarks on this National Day of Prayer. And certainly what people want to know is when, you know, we saw in Weijia Jiang's piece uh, earlier uh, that moment on Air Force One when President Trump was directly asked about Stormy Daniels, about the payments that were made. And he said he didn't know anything about it, that we the press should talk to Michael Cohen. Well, then we found right. out that Michael Cohen had indeed paid off uh, Stormy Daniels. And now Rudy Giuliani goes out there and he says this on Fox. And I mean, if, if you know, th that moment where he's on Sean Hannity's show and you can hear the surprise in Mr. Hannity's voice when 
Mayor Giuliani says this, and now you're saying to me that the president was aware that he was going to say all this. It just seems strange that now Sarah Huckabee Sanders is not able to address it because, uh, as you say, it's sort of a dumpster fire. Right. That, that is true. He also brought up Stormy Daniels, un, uh, you know, without Hannity even prompting him to. Um, but, you know, again, this is what we've seen time and time again. Um, Sarah refer, Sarah saying one thing, the president saying another thing, uh, and then, you know, someone coming out of the blue and blowing the whole thing up. But, I, you know, I do know, I do have sources who tell me that the president still calls them directly. After they've done a hit on Tucker Carlson, a hit on Fox and Friends, they'll get a call from an unknown number. It's the president himself calling them, weighing in on their performance, telling them if they did a good job or not. Um, so, you know, this is a president, as we've known all along, that is very difficult, difficult to be a staffer for, especially in the communications shop. Uh, and, you know, we'll see Sarah Sanders in the uh, briefing today. It's going to be a, a probably pretty tough briefing, with probably very few answers. And again, a lot of the phrase, this is ongoing litigation, I can't comment. I refer you to the president's outside counsel, who happens to be Rudy Giuliani. And the difficulty, Jackie, uh, for those of you in the White House press briefing room, is what you've just pointed out, which is that uh, this information will come out. You, the White House press corps, will ask Sarah Huckabee Sanders to comment on it. And right. very often, she, I remember that one moment that you essentially asked her if all 16 women who've accused President Trump of sexual harassment are lying, and Sarah Huckabee Sanders essentially confirmed, yes, they are lying. Uh, and that was a surreal moment for a lot of people. I suspect that when you go into that briefing room today and you ask about this payment, it does sound as if she's sort of hedging here um, and not really addressing it, but it, would be, it will be interesting to see uh, when she's pressed what she has to say about uh, these comments from Rudy Giuliani. Right. I mean, even in past briefings, the last time I asked about Stormy Daniels, she cut me off and two other White House reporters backed me up and asked the same exact question I asked um, before she peddled it again to outside counsel, uh, to Michael Cohen um, and, you know, moved on. So uh, I know that the communications team spends many hours prepping Sarah for these briefings. The president watches them closely. He's probably going to be scrutinizing her performance today. Um, and I, I'm sure they're back there right now already preparing for this afternoon. Mm. All right. Uh, before I let you go, Jackie, I also want to yeah. ask you the latest about the three Americans that are being held right now in North Korea. We know right. that Rudy Giuliani uh, also said today that they would be released. But what do you know about that? Right. There are really there's so much news that came out of this Giuliani interview. It's hard to you know keep track of everything. But um, as you know, the president is preparing for his upcoming summit with North Korea. Uh, you know, this is a very sensitive topic. The White House has been notably tight lipped about this. So is the State Department. So is the National Security Council. They have not given us any answers. I was told specifically by a White House um, aide that this is classified information. They are not able to give me an answer on it. And they probably don't want to until the deal is actually done. But then you had Rudy Giuliani go out there this morning and announce uh, you know, uh, this is, mind you, an outside legal counsel who does not have a security clearance announced that the, that the, uh, the three American hostages in North Korea have been freed from labor camps. Um, and Sarah Sanders went on Fox News shortly after Giuliani and wouldn't say. She said that she hoped that news was true, that it was good news, but um, she had nothing to update us on. So, again, so many mixed messages going on today. Just another chaotic week in this White House. And, I, you know, I'll be interested to hear what uh, if a question is asked of Sarah Huckabee Sanders about President Trump's claim on Twitter uh, that past administration, meaning Obama, failed to uh, get these North Korean detainees, uh, those, those detainees uh, detained in North Korea released when two of those detainees were taken under President Trump's watch. Not all three were taken under President Obama's watch. Yeah, that's a that's a good fact check. Although I do have to give this administration a bit of credit. They, you know, they did free um, the hostage Aya Hijazi from Egypt, uh, and they have been overall more aggressive in trying to, um, you know, secure uh, American hostages overseas. But again, this is a very delicate dance, um, especially as you know, uh, as the White House is trying to hash out all of the details of this upcoming summit. There's a lot on the line here. Now, there's no doubt, Jackie, that uh, this administration has done an excellent job of trying to free uh, Americans. And 
and others uh, who are not even uh, Americans who have been jailed under uh, false pretenses. But the president also sometimes has issues with the facts that he puts That's out true. on Twitter. And so just to clear that up for audience, but you raise a very good point. Um, Jackie, yeah. always great to have you. Thank you so much for your reporting. I urge our viewers to follow you on Twitter because uh, <laughs> Thanks, you do Bob. have, yeah, your, your reporting, uh, you usually first see it on Twitter before you come on the air. So I uh, appreciate it. I appreciate it.